Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make some collage papers because like I mentioned in the last video, I kind of ran out of all of the ones that I really liked and I had an idea for a future project using just um, Shades of Grey collage mixed media style piece. So today I'm making a whole bunch of different shades of black, white, gray, and cream collage papers. And in a future video, we're gonna go ahead and make that mixed media piece with those papers. So join me on the process and I hope you learn something or get inspired to make some of these yourself. And um, hey, you know what? I am always interested to see what you guys are making. So feel free to drop any pictures of any of your current works in progress, any cool papers that you make, anything at all in the comments. And I, I would love to see it and I'm sure others would too. So all right, let's go check it out. So I'm just starting with some black Liquitex paint here. And like I said before, I am mainly doing black, white, gray, and cream colored prints with a few exceptions and I can call those out on the screen whenever I get to them. Um, I'm doing this because I want to do a Grisai style mixed media piece which is just black, white, and gray basically. Um, here I'm using stencils that I made. I just used some of that Doralar that I mentioned in previous videos, and it's, which is just like a thin sheet of plastic, and cut out the circle shapes. Um, I've wanted something in this shape, but I kind of figure, why buy it if I can make it myself? So I was at least going to try, and it was successful. I like the prints that it's leaving on the plate there. You saw me go in with what looked like a sponge. And it's actually a little, um, one of those magic eraser sponges. And I cut it to make some shapes. I was hoping I'd be able to remove ink from the plate with it, but that didn't work out so well. But I am able to use it as a stamp, which you will see coming up here. Now that I've left the black dry a bit, I'm going in here just with some cream colored craft paint and uh, Liquitex titanium white. What I'm pulling with today is all tissue paper. The smaller sheets are just regular gift tissue paper that you can get from the store, and the larger sheets are the wet strength tissue paper. I don't really have too much of an issue with the regular tissue paper. You do have to be somewhat careful when you're pulling because they will rip. I mean, you know the consistency of the paper itself. It's very thin, easily torn. But if you're careful, I've found that I really don't have too many issues with it. These are just little strips of the Doralar that I cut because I wanted to get something more linear in some of the prints. So I'm laying those down and they're acting as a mask here. And when I pull up the sheet, you'll be able to see what's left on the plate. I really like the pattern that the round stencils gave. And I just love the black and white. The contrast is unbeatable, and I think that's going to make for some really cool collage paper in the future. Here you can see the linear marks that were left by the Doralar strips that I cut. Just going over that with some of the Mars Black. And it gives some of those nice straight lines. Next up I'm using that little magic eraser stamp that I made just to put some of these rectangular marks on the plate. They're irregular, which I love, and I wanted something with that consistent kind of pattern, so I thought, again, why, why buy it when I can just make it? The one on the right on the larger plate is just a little bit of a longer one that I cut, but it's doing the same exact thing. I'm just going back over top of the prints that I just took to add a little bit more interest and depth to them. I'm 
really loving the way the stamp is working out. I like the prints that it's pulling, and it's leaving a nice ghost print on the plate that you can see, and I'm going to be able to get several more prints off of that as well. Now I'm just going in with some of that cream colored craft paint. I love the black and cream together. The cream warms everything up a little bit. The titanium white is a very stark, pure white, which is great if that's what you're looking for, but I do love the warmness of the cream colored craft paint on here. What I'm intending on doing with these is making the, the black, white, and gray piece, but a way to make a successful piece of mixed media or abstract art is to either repeat colors or patterns. So I do have the same pattern in the black and cream and the black and white now, but that'll be good elements to create a successful background. Each of the prints that I pull off of these ghost prints are becoming less and less intense, which is kind of a great quality because that's one way to look like something receding into the background is to diffuse the intensity of the color. So if that's something that I'm looking for in a future piece, I'll easily be able to accomplish that with these prints. Here I'm just taking a regular rubber stamp that my mom gave to me and I am simultaneously creating two prints. I am removing paint off of the small square on the left and depositing it on the large plate to the right. So what that's going to do is give me a much more opaque, blacker look on the left, and I'm only going to see the printed leaf shapes on the right because I'm going over that with some of the gel matte medium, so that's only going to pick up the print. I didn't want any other color, I just wanted the leaf shapes on this particular pool. That one I'm going over with the cream again. There's so much black paint already deposited on the plate that you're not going to see a lot of the cream through there, but you will get enough of it to be able to uh, see the contrast between the cream and the black. If you look here, you'll be able to see that only the shapes on the stamp actually printed because I used that gel matte medium. Here I'm just cleaning up the plate a little bit, so I'm putting down some of the gel matte medium and I have an old print that I had that it's just basically some color blocks and I'm pulling up all of the black. There's some linear marks on there, but it just makes it a little bit more interesting and I'll be able to use that in a background as well. Here I'm going in again with the titanium white, and I had enough left over on the roller that rather than roll off onto a scrap sheet, I figured I would just put it down on the small plate as well and get two for the price of one. So I'm basically on the right hand side, I just rolled out the titanium white and I laid down a sheet of the wet strength tissue paper. I'm just kind of cleaning off the plate there too, but I should be able to get something usable. On the left, I'm just using a little piece. Uh, it actually came between some makeup sponges that I had. It was the part that was holding them together and I thought it would make a neat shape, but it doesn't actually really pull much up. And so you'll see here in a second, I'm going over it, I think with some gray paint and it just, I don't know if there's not enough of a contrast between the two colors or if I didn't clean the sponge off in between stamps as much as I should have, but it doesn't really work out the way I wanted it to. On the right, I'm going 
back in with my Dora Lar strips to create a little bit more uh, of a larger striped piece here. So I'm using all of the ones that I cut which don't entirely fill up the sheet. So to use up the rest of the space, I'm going to take those circular stencils that I made and just lay them down there to get a little bit more interest on the page. Because remember, you're not necessarily using these whole sheets. You could if you're working on a large enough canvas or board, but these are going to be ripped up and torn up, so don't waste any of the space on your paper because chances are you're going to be taking different pieces and chunks out, and it's not going to matter if there are different prints on one page. You'll see I do that with the large sheets of the wet strength tissue paper. And that's basically just not to waste it because that stuff is not really cheap and I wanna get as much as I can out of each individual sheet and there's really no point in wasting the space. Sometimes I'll overlap the prints one over top of the other on the larger sheets because you can get something interesting looking. Sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes it isn't, but I never regret doing it because it always produces an interesting result. You can see here that that pattern really didn't, didn't show up at all. I'm going in here with one of my favorite tools. If you've watched any of the videos that I've done, you will know that I use the uh, recycled gift cards or credit cards or whatever you have laying around. I use those for all kinds of different things. And I wanted something very linear, but with much, much finer lines on it. And this was absolutely perfect. So all I did was squeeze out a little bit of the black paint on a scratch page and just dip the edge of the card in and just go in and lay it down. And I don't go in and reload the card every single time. Um, I really like the different quality of line that it gives as the paint tends to wear away on the card. So you're gonna get some very dark solid lines and you're going to get some that are a little lighter and a little more broken. And I really like the way that looks. This was exactly the look I was going for. I'm very pleased with it, and there's enough paint left on the plate that I'm going to be able to get at least one more pull off of there as well. I'm really happy with the amount of paint that is remaining on the plate for the ghost prints because I'm able to get so many more pulls off of these with less intensity and I just really love that quality. I'm going to have so much to work with here and it's great when you get to have multiple pulls off of the same plate when you lay down the paint each time.
I'm just going in with a store-bought stencil because I want to be able to get some of these round patterns. And on the right-hand side, I'm doing a little bit of a printing on top of some book pages and some music sheets. Um, mostly it's just cleaning off the plate right now, but I will be able to use those. This one especially, it didn't leave as much of the visible uh, page underneath, but you can still see it and I think it'll make for some interesting collage paper. I'm changing it up just slightly now because I wanted to get a little bit of a warmer cream color so to the titanium white I added on some of the yellow ochre and it's just warming it up enough that it's slightly different than what I was using. You'll see here on the right I'm coming in with a new stencil. This is something that I made out of just a piece of drawing paper, but I went ahead and covered it on both sides with some of the matte gel medium. I covered one side completely, let it dry, covered the other side. And what that's doing is making the stencil a little more durable. I could have just used the drawing paper as is, and I probably would have got two or three pulls out of it before it disintegrated, but because the spaces in between the circles are so thin, it's likely they would have torn when I was pulling it off of the plate. But this way, I'm gonna be able to get that to last a lot longer. It's not gonna be as good as using a sheet of plastic, but the drawing paper was so easy to cut. I made that so quickly that it's worth it to me if that thing will last for 10 or 20 pulls and then I make another one, rather than going through the time spent and tedium of cutting all of those circles out of the piece of plastic with my X-Acto knife. Next I'm coming in with my absolute favorite stencil and this is one that I made and let me tell you it took quite a while because I cut each and every one of those little rectangles out of there by hand with an X-Acto knife but it was totally worth it because I just love this stamp. I use it a lot. 
If you watched my bird videos, you'll know that you'll recognize that I had some prints that had this shape and pattern in it, and I thought, I just want more of those pages. So I'm gonna go ahead here and fill both of these plates completely up with this stamp. And what I'm doing is kind of roughly lining them up just so that there are no obvious giant chunks of space between the two, but by no means is this perfect and I'm not going for perfection here. I'm just going for something that's purposeful, but still handmade looking. And these prints are just great. I already love them. They are already some of my favorites. I know I will use them. I will continue making this pattern in different colors because I, there's just something about it. I can't really explain the quality, but I just love the way it looks. Now seemed like a good time to introduce a little bit of color into these. I really love the green gold color, or gold green, I don't know which color comes first, but that color anyway, you can see it there. It's one of my favorites, and I had just enough of the black squares left on there that I just thought those would work absolutely beautifully together. And on the plate on the right with the homemade stencil that I made, I'm using some Burnt Sienna from Liquitex. I just bought this color and it is just ugh, already one of my favorites. I don't know how I didn't have this in my collection before, but I do now and I will probably be using it a lot. But look at that pull, those colors together are just amazing. I 
I didn't love the way this one turned out. I don't know what I had in my mind, but it's not what happened, and I'm probably not going to end up using any of these pieces on the book pages. They just kind of look messy and not really purposeful. But I'm going to go ahead and clean that plate up with some titanium white, and that's going to give me a nice grungy background sheet that I'll definitely be able to tear up and use in some sort of collage. I'm just going to take you in and show you some of the results today. These are some of my favorite prints that we got. I am so pleased with everything, the way everything turned out, the colors that I used, the quality of the prints. Everything just really made me very happy about this session today. But I encourage you to try making your own stencils and masks. It's really not very hard. You don't need any kind of special equipment. You can absolutely use old magazine pages, any kind of drawing paper that you have hanging around. Just understand that they're probably not going to last you more than one or two pulls, but if you don't care about that and you've got it there and it's free, why not take advantage of it and use it? And you'll be really surprised at some of the results that you'll get. And if you do try any of these and you feel like sharing, please post a picture in the comments and I would love to see what you come up with. I would love to use this forum as a means of education and sharing and we can all kind of take a look at what each other are doing and help each other out with suggestions and offer some positive thoughts. But anyway, thank you all so much again for joining me today. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, hit that subscribe button and if you like what you see, give me a like and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much guys and have a great day.